ROS2 NAV2 stack makes a good combination for autonomy behavior right out of the box. But there are some situations where you need to tweak the parameters for your application. Specifically in mobile robots, there are scenarios where you need to speed up the robot and limit the inflation of the layers. In this video, we will be looking into cost map, planners and speed of the robot and the changes in parameter that will directly impact the behavior of our robot. So let's start with cost maps. For navigation, we need a map. In our scenario for 2D mobile robot, we have a 2D map. These black lines are obstacles. This white area in this square is representing free area. Now, if I zoom into it, we give a pose estimation for the robot. It brings in the robot and here at this specific point, you can see that a blue line around the obstacles have been generated. That blue area is inflation for the obstacle so the robot have a safe area while traveling the dark blue area around the robot in a small square is for the local cost map this blue area with brown obstacles our big white map has been transformed into a cost map which is a global cost map it now has a origin as well for navigation purposes we select nav to goal and give it on our map it is going to generate a path the path contains multiple pink arrows which help the robot to navigate but the important point you need to look at is this path is generated while considering this blue area around the obstacles. Currently the robot is not moving. There can be many reasons. One simple problem would be the size of inflation layer in the local cost map. For now the robot started to move but it got stuck in the first place in a pink area around the wall that is the part of inflation layer we will understand what the problem is but currently the robot is not moving and it is inside of a recovery behavior whenever the robot is unable to find the path or it is unable to follow the path in both of the scenarios it is going to fall into recovery behaviors which is sort of a backup behavior of the robot to move a little bit backwards or rotate and find the path again but in our scenario it is not going to be able to get to the path back because the inflation radius is so high for the walls and the walls are really close that they are overlapping and there is no possibility that the planner is going to make the robot move from that specific point this problem is going to be fixed using the parameter tuning but first we need to understand what is inflation layer for the navigation stack we have all of these properties local cost map and global cost maps are the important thing right now so open up global cost map here in the inflation layer we have cost scaling factor and inflation radius if we take a look into the wiki here you can see we have inflation layer parameters and a lot of radius with appropriate descriptions are provided important one here is inflation radius radius to inflate cost map around lethal obstacles the dark black ones and cost scaling factor which is actually a decay factor across inflation radius greater the decay factor smaller the inflation radius and easier for the navigation stack to plan so coming back to our properties let's increase the inflation radius to 0.4 from 0.2 and decay factor we are going to decrease it to enlarge our inflation radius let's compile it and build it and rerun our simulation the first thing give a pose estimate for our robot this is our simulation and there is a proper difference let's give a goal now at this specific point you can see the lines or the path that has been produced is according to the inflation radius it is not colliding or intercepting it and it is continuously updating this robot is currently again stuck inside of the inflation radius between two walls and this small square which is a blue area is for the local cost map and it is making the robot not able to pass through it because of the overlapping of pink inflation radius area that you can see here so let's close it and make some changes inside of our local cost map inflation radius inflation layer first we are going to increase the dk factor for our inflation radius and we are going to decrease the value of inflation layer let's build it and rerun the simulation give a pose estimate and give a goal to the robot let's now zoom in and you can see the inflation radius for the local map this small square is now reduced to very appropriate value and robot is passing through the same area which it was not able to pass previously 
in respect to the parameter tuning of cost maps you have to be very careful about the size of the cost map global cost map should be equal to the size of the total map but local cost map should not be bigger than that or very much big that it is just a memory constraint so you have to pick it very wisely about your requirements and application you are working on because we don't want to have global and local of the same size otherwise there would be no use of one another so once appropriate size is decided we will move towards planners and the planners are again an important decision because we have to think about how much far ahead should we be planning and updating at what speed so let's take a look on the parameters for planners when you see a robot moving on the plan given by nav to stack there are two things after cost map and those are planning properties if you can see this pink line it is the global plan that is given to the nav to stack but there is also a local plan that is visible inside of our local cost map you can see there is a very tiny blue line which has been overlapped by the cost map that is actually a local plan which is actually trying to follow the global plan now which you can see easily this blue line straight blue line which is trying to achieve the global plan and let's shift to the yaml file and understand which local planners we are using inside of our bt navigator follow path uses dwb local planner we have a lot of other options in nav to wiki teb planner mp pi controller and a lot of other things that we can also do one important thing that you have to understand is the minimum and maximum velocities of your robot you want while it is performing the autonomous navigation to the goals let me increase all of these velocities to a quite high value the result is going to be really interesting let me build this and rerun it let me give the goal and now you will see the response the robot is moving very fast and it is colliding and you can see the local planner is trying very hard to get to the global plan and it has collided with the wall the very first time when i saw the simulation i thought that this is just plug and play and we have to set the location and give a goal and the robot automatically moves that is the case but if you are doing a project for yourself or a company you have to think about tuning certain parameters for their requirements and for that you need to understand how the parameters are directly affecting the autonomous behavior of your robot so we have explored a robot that was not passing through a certain area and with the parameter tuning setting the inflation radius the robot was able to do that and depending upon the requirement of the speed we fix the speed and the size of the cost map for the memory efficiency so there are a lot of parameters that i have not gone through but ros2 nav2 wiki is there for your help give you better understanding what are the definitions of these parameters and how they're going to affect and as it is open source you can look at the implementation as well